in the midst of the church, he opened his mouth, and the Lord filled him with the spirit of wisdom and understanding, and clothed him in a robe of glory. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. My dear people of God, let us prepare ourselves to celebrate these mysteries. Lord Jesus, you raise us to new life. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgive us our sins. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you feed us with your body and blood. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. May he forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who made the Bishop St. Ambrose a teacher of the Catholic faith and a model of apostolic courage, raise up in your church men after your own heart to govern her with courage and wisdom. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Pro from the book of the prophet of Isaiah. On that day, they will sing this song in the land of Judah. A strong city have we, he sets up walls and ramparts to protect us. Open up the gates to let in a nation that is just, one that keeps faith. A nation of firm purpose you keep in peace, in peace for it trusts in you. Trust in the Lord forever, for the Lord is an eternal rock. He humbles those in high places, and the lofty city he brings down. He tumbles it to the ground, levels it with the dust. It is trampled underfoot by the needy, by the footsteps of the poor. The word of the Lord. Amen. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in man. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in princes. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Open to me the gates of justice. I will enter them and give thanks to the Lord. The gate is the Lord's, the just shall enter it. I will give thanks to you, for you have answered me and have been my Savior. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. O Lord, grant salvation. O Lord, grant prosperity. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. The Lord is God and has given us light. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call him while he is near. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only the one who does the will of my Father in heaven. Everyone who listens to these words of mine and acts on them will be like a wise man who built his house on rock. 
the rain fell, the floods came, and the winds blew and buffeted the house. But it did not collapse. It had been set solidly on rock. And everyone who listens to these words of mine, but does not act on them, will be like a fool who built his house on sand. The rain fell, the floods came, and the winds blew and buffeted the house, and it collapsed and was completely ruined. The Gospel of the Lord. God is good, and all the time. In the ancient days, cities were protected by the erection of walls. And when walls were built around the cities to protect them from enemies and attacks, towers were also erected where if someone may stand there to alert the citizens if there were emerging attacks. And with that image, the prophet Isaiah gives an analogy of a strong city where walls and ramparts are built to protect the people in the city. He uses that city and the walls around them, not in the analogy or not as understood by the olden days, but in his case, he uses it as an analogy of God who protects his people from attacks. And the gospel of today also builds on the understanding of prophet Isaiah to say that those who listen to God's word and act on them will not only have walls around them to protect them, but they will be like a city in itself or a house built on rock that cannot be swayed away by attacks and by enemies. But those who only serve the Lord with left service will be like fools who have their houses built on sand. The wind will blow and it will buffet them. And this brings to mind this doctor of the church that we celebrate today, St. Ambrose. He was born in the year 340, 340, and died in the year 397. He was born in a noble family, trained in Rome. Those days, if someone was trained in Rome, it was something very important. And after his training in Rome, he went to Milan and was made an emperor there. And whilst there, we are told that he was at that time in the catechism class when the bishop of the place died, the bishop of Milan died. And by popular acclamation, Ambrose was made a bishop. He wasn't even baptized at that time. But then, by that popular acclamation, because at that time he stood firm with the faith, preached the faith, even whilst he was in a catechism class, and even fought those Arians. When he talked of those who proclaim or profess Arianism, these are those who do not believe in the divinity of God or Christ. They believe that Christ was not God, but only man. And Ambrose, at that time, even whilst he was in a catechism class, stood and catechized and fought these people. And so when the sea of Milan became vacant by popular acclamation, the people wanted him to be a bishop. He resisted. But then the voice of the people became the voice of God. He was baptized on the same day. He received the Eucharist on the same day. He was confirmed the same day and was consecrated a bishop the same day. 
This is what one who stands for the truth can become. And this is what one who courageously stands for the word of God and act on it can become. The wheels may turn anti-clockwise when all things are going clockwise because God will intervene in his or her life. St. Ambrose is an example for us today that if we stand for God's word and if we act on it not merely with our lip service, he will always be with us and be a miracle in our lives. Through the intercession of St. Ambrose, who helped in the conversion of St. Augustine, may God give us the courage to stand for the truth and his word always. Amen. Confident of Christ's glorious return, we pray for God's people. May all the faithful be sustained in hope by the example of the saints. And for all God's children, may every child of God come to know the faithfulness of the Most High. Let us pray to the Lord. For political leaders and all who hold authority, may they always remember that true authority belongs to God alone. And for the poor and oppressed, may they discover new cause for hope in the enduring strength of the just one. Let us pray to the Lord. For those sick in body or weary in spirit, may our untiring God lift them from weariness and pain. And for the dead, may the mighty wings of God most high left them to life everlasting. Let us pray to the Lord. In the silence of our hearts, let us put our various intentions before God. Source of comfort, though we weary of waiting, you console us with prophetic words. Increase our hope in your promise and renew our strength with your presence. May we joyfully welcome Christ when he returns and soar like eagles to our dwelling place. We ask this in Jesus' name. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, that it may become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine we offer you, fruit of divine and work of human hands, that it may become for us our spiritual drink.
Prayer, my dear people of God, and my sacrifice in yours may be acceptable to the Lord God Almighty. As we celebrate the divine mysteries, O Lord, we pray, may the Holy Spirit fill us with that light of faith by which he constantly enlightens St. Ambrose for the spreading of your glory, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For us on the festival of St. Ambrose, you bid your church rejoice. So too you strengthen her by the example of his holy life. Teach her by his words of preaching and keep her safe in answer to his prayers. And so in the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise. As without end, we acclaim. Holy, You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like they do for, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim the death of the Lord and of Christ's resurrection until the end of the Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church prayers throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, and Mary, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them to the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray. That with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have placed you throughout the ages, we may marry to be coerced to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by his divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father,
Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously granted a peace and unity in accordance with your will. Your whole heaven reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. He who ponders the law of the Lord day and night will yield fruit in due season.
Let us pray. Lead us who have been strengthened by the power of this sacrament, O Lord, so to profit from the teaching of St. Ambrose, that hastening fearlessly along your path, we may be prepared for the delights of the eternal banquet through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. May the Almighty God bless and keep you, Father and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go forth and spread the Gospel. St. Michael the Archangel, 